to you a tutorial on how to make absolutely perfect cranny squares that always come out just the way that you want. This video is aimed at absolute beginners and so it works with any kind of yarn that you might have to hand, whether that be cottons like I have here or perhaps if you're using a much chunkier, thicker wool. In fact, all you're going to need for your granny squares is a yarn of your choice. For the demonstration, I'm going to be using this cotton, a crochet hook, and a pair of scissors. And the first thing you're going to want to do is attach your yarn onto your hook. And to do so, you'll need to put a little ring in your yarn like so. Act like you're going to pass the tail all the way through, but instead just pull it into a little loop, which we call a slip knot. You can then insert your hook onto that loop and pull the yarn so that it is just tight enough on the hook that it's not going to go anywhere. Then from here we're going to be adding four chain stitches. So to do that you are going to grab hold of the yarn with your hook and pull it through that loop that was already on the shaft. So that will be one chain and then we'll go for it again. Two chains, three chains, four chains. So you can see that we've made a little set of links just there. And now we need to attach these links together so that they form a hoop, which is going to be the middle of our granny square. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to push your hook through the first link of those chains, like so. It's all going to look like a bit of a mess, but don't worry. Just grab your yarn, pull through that link, and then pull it again through the hoop which is on the shaft like so, and you'll end up with this weird looking squiggly mess on the end of the hook. And then ignoring the squiggly mess just for a moment, you're going to add another three chains onto the end of that one little hoop. So one, two, and grabbing our yarn and pulling through, three. So there's our three chains on the end of our squiggle. And from here, we need to find the middle of this little squiggle in order to be able to work into it. So if you pull it about a little bit, and just give it a little bit of a tug, you should find that you can see roughly where that loop is. So the chains are all running around in a circle around here, and that little gap in the middle is the centre of it. If I tug it like that, you can see it a little bit more clearly if you pull it from side to side. So there, that is our centre hole, and that's what we're going to be working into. And so, with that in mind, we need to start making trebles, as that's what granny squares are made out of. Now, a treble stitch, you need to wrap the yarn around your hook, just like so, and then you're going to push the point of the hook through that hole that you found before. Just like so. So we've gone into the squiggly mess. From there, we can grab our yarn and pull through, so that we now have three hoops on the hook, as you can see just there. And from here, we're going to grab hold of our yarn, pull through two of those hoops, so that we still have two hoops on the hook. Then we're going to grab the yarn again and pull through the remaining two hoops. So that is creating our first proper treble stitch. And from there, we're going to be repeating the process. So we're going to create another treble, wrapping our yarn around our hook going into the exact same hole that we went into before, the centre of this little squiggle. Grab hold of the yarn again. Pull through. So we've got three hoops on the hook. Grab and pull through two of those hoops. Grab and pull through the remaining two. And what you should have after that is in effect still a bit of a mess to be honest with you but it will come together don't worry because that was your first group of three trebles and so what we're going to do now is we are going to add one little chain so grabbing hold of our yarn and pulling through the hoop that's already on the shaft and then we're going to start doing the trebles again we can see our little hole in the center it's becoming much more clear now and so we can do exactly the same as we did before we're going to wrap the yarn around our hook insert into the center hole, grab the yarn, pull through so that we've got three hoops on the shaft of our hook. From there we can grab the yarn, pull through two of those hoops, and again grab and pull through the remaining two hoops. 
so you should be left each time with just one hoop still on the shaft. And then we can do it again. So we're going to make another treble, wrap our yarn around the hook, insert into the centre hole, grab the yarn, pull through the centre hole, so we've got those three hoops on that shaft, grab and pull through two hoops, grab and pull through the remaining two hoops. There we go. And then we're going to do it once again. So we can wrap our yarn around the hook again, insert into that central hole, which is becoming much more obvious now that we're working into it, grab the yarn, pull through, three hoops on that shaft, grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two. And you can see much more clearly now what we are creating. So we've got this central hole in the middle, and then we've got these three radiating trebles coming off, then a little gap where we did the chain, and then three trebles again. And we need to repeat this until we have four sets of three trebles. So we're going to do another little chain just on the end, like so. So that is your chain stitch. And then we're going to work another set of three trebles into this central hole. Wrapping our yarn, insert, grab and pull through. Grab the yarn, pull through two hoops, grab and pull through two hoops. Don't worry about the tail at the moment. This is the original slip knot tail that we created at the beginning. You can just completely ignore that. We will tie it in at the end. We're going to go again though. So another treble and just keep going until we've got, as I say, four sets of three trebles with a chain in between them. And another one. little chain. Now you will find once you reach this point where you've got quite a few stitches already worked into that hole that things might be coming a little bit tight. That's okay, it is quite tough so you can move things around a little bit and they will slide on that ring that you created at the beginning just so that you can bunch them up a little bit. From there though we've got plenty of space to work our remaining three trebles into this hole. So once again Wrapping our yarn, we will insert into the hole in the center, grab our yarn and pull through, grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two. And then this is going to be the last two trebles, and then we will have completed our first row. So again, wrapping the yarn, insert into the hole, grab and pull through, go through two, grab and pull through the remaining two, and the last one. You can tug things around a little bit just to get things nice and neat. And it's worth at this point just having a quick count to make sure that you've got everything that you need before you move on to the next row. So what you should be able to see is that you've got the original three chains that we did at the start of this row. Then we've got two trebles and they bunch together to make one set of three. And then we've got three more trebles just there, three more trebles just there, and then this set of three trebles that I've just done, each of them with a little hole in between where we did the chain. So you can see that when we go on to the next row, that's where we're going to be working into for the corners. To finish this row off though, I'm just going to add another little chain onto the end there, just like so. And then I need to attach this side to this side so that I've not got this great big weird gap in the middle, I'm trying to collect them up so that they make a circle. And to do that, we are simply going to insert our hook into this top corner stitch that you can see just here. So we'll be just be inserting the tip of our hook into that top stitch, which is right on the very edge. Grab our yarn and pull through. Grab and pull through again. So it's gone through both of those stitches. So just to show that again, what I'm doing is I am going through this top stitch that you can see here, right into it underneath that loop that's on the edge, that's on the very sort of top corner. If we pull this one out straight a little bit, see that's gonna be where the circle needs to join. So I'm just gonna insert my hook in there. From there, I'm going to grab hold of my yarn and pull through. And then I'm not gonna grab the yarn again, instead I'm gonna pull it through this loop as well. Ooh. 
all just like so. And so you can see now we've connected all around the edges so that we've created a circle. And then from here, I'm going to add three little chains onto this loop. So once again, that's going to be grabbing hold of our yarn, pulling through. So there's one chain and two chains and three chains. Just like so. And now we can flip over our work. Don't worry about little pulls and strains like this. That's just where it's tugging on the tension that's within the strands. It will all go back to normal once you've given it a bit of a pull around. So don't worry about things like that. But anyway, yep, so we can now just turn our work over. We can literally just flip it right around. And now we're going to be doing very similar to what we did before, but we're going to be working into all these little gaps that we left going around the edges when we created our first row. So this little set of chains that we've created, this counts as a first treble stitch. So to that, we need to add two more of them, and we're going to be working into this little gap. So we're going to be wrapping our yarn around our hook, inserting it straight through that great big gap that's in between the wheels, sort of like the spokes of this wheel, if you will. Grab the yarn and pull through, and then same as before, grab and pull through two of the hoops on the shaft, to leave two, then grab and pull through the remaining two. And again, just adding another one of those trebles, so wrap our yarn, insert into the hole, grab and pull through. So we've now got three hoops on our shaft, grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two. So that's created another set of three trebles emanating from this little hole. And now we're on to this second row, it's time to start turning it into a square rather than a circle. And to do that, we're just going to add one little chain stitch, just like so. That is going to be plenty of space just to allow us to turn a corner and go back in the opposite direction, which will all make sense in just a second. But we're going to add in three more trebles going into that same hole again. So we'll be wrapping our yarn, inserting into the hole, grab and pull through, grab and pull through two, grab and pull through two, and add another two to this. So one more treble, and another treble. And so if we now look a little bit more closely at what we've just created again, you can see that we've got a little set of three trebles here and a little set of three trebles here with this gap in the middle where you did the chain. And if we tug on that gap, you can see it becomes a corner. And now we just need to repeat that into each of these little holes that we've got, there's gaps in between the first set of spokes. And just to point out, you don't need any stitches at all in between your sets of three trebles unless it's a corner. You only put that extra chain stitch when you're turning a corner, otherwise just go straight back into trebles again. So we need to move over to this side and we're just going to add another treble straight into there. Here we go, so there's another little set of three trebles, and because we're going to be turning a corner again, now we are going to add one little chain, just like so. And then from here, now that we've done that chain, once again, we're just going to do another set of three trebles into that hole. Granny scares are wonderfully repetitive. They are very easy to just sit and do of an evening because you really don't need to think about them once you get going. So once you've got your next set of three trebles, we'll just move on to the very next hole along. And exactly the same as before, because we're not turning a corner, we don't need to do any more stitches. We can just go straight into there, working in our little trebles. But that's literally all you need to do for this row. So I'm going to work my way around each of the corners. We're going to be doing three trebles, a chain, and then three trebles, and then just moving straight on to the next corner. Three trebles, a chain, three trebles. But I'll finish those up and I'll meet you back once I've finished. Okay, so I've done all of the second row, as you can see, and now we're ready once again to attach it up at the top so that we become a continuous hole rather than having this 
big weird gap in the middle. And so just the same as we did before, and again remembering you don't need any extra stitches after you finish the trebles because we're not turning a corner, I am just going to attach it over to the other side. And to do that I will take a little look at the stitches on the other side and I can see that this one here looks to be the one that's in the topmost corner. This little stitch you can see just here underneath my thumbnail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert the hook underneath that, grab hold of the yarn and pull through, and then instead of doing any other stitches I'm just going to put it straight through the other hoop that was on the shaft as well. Just like so. And now these two sides are attached. And so once again I can add my three chain stitches. So one, two and three. And from there I can flip the work over. Just like so. <laughs> so now we can work back in the opposite direction adding on row number three. And row number three is very slightly different because we haven't just got corners to work into this time, we've now got these edges as well. And so what we're going to do is put a treble in each of those. You have two sets of trebles in the corners, one set of trebles on the edges. So as usual this first set of chains counts as a treble so we'll ignore that one, and to that we are going to add two trebles inserted into the nice big hole here that we can't exactly miss. So we'll just pop our hook in there and add two little trebles going into that one. And that gives us a group of trebles up at the top, and because we're not changing corner yet, this is an edge, we're just going to go straight over to this corner and do our next set of trebles straight into that hole. So we'll wrap our yarn over, and then insert as usual, and we'll just create a little treble over here. And because this is exactly the same style of corner stitch that we've done before, we know that into this we need to do two sets of three trebles separated by one chain, which is going to be where the corner turns. So there's my first set of three trebles, one little chain, and now I can add another set of three. And that just gives the workspace to turn a corner without leaving a massive unsightly gap. Okay, so you can see that we're starting on row three here, we've gone round that corner, and now we need to do this edge piece. Each of the edges, as I say, only has one set of trebles in there, so again you don't need to add any stitches once you've done the set of trebles from the corner, just do a treble straight away into that little gap. And from there we can just continue on all the way around exactly the same as we did before. So each of the corners, two sets of trebles separated by a chain, each of the edges just a set of trebles. But I will do that and I will meet you back when I get to the other side. Okay. So I have now finished off the third row and I need to attach that to the other side, but what if I wanted to change colour? What if I was getting a bit bored of this one and it was time to move on to something different? Well we're going to change colour in exactly the same way we would usually finish off a row, so what we'll do is we'll come to our last few stitches, have a look at them, decide which one is the topmost stitch on the top corner, I believe it's probably this one just here, and so I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch, and there I'm going to stop. Instead of grabbing the old colour and pulling through, now I'm going to bring in the new colour. And so I will just lay that directly over the shaft of the hook like so, and I'm going to pull this colour through these two hoops. Through the first hoop, and then through the second one. So you can see that new colour is now attaching those two hoops of the old colour together. From here I can pull this a little bit tighter, and then I can continue on exactly the same as I would have done if it was the old colour. So the same as before, add in three little chains, turn the work over, and you might notice it's doing something like this, so it's got a bit of a pull there, if I tug on it you can see where it's going to just sort of drag that tail through. You can use that, just tighten it back up again a little bit, just so that it holds together nicely. From here though we can work our way back exactly the same as we would have done with the old colour. And so because this is an edge stitch, the corners don't come in till here, this is going to be an edge, we just need to add two more little trebles in there to bring it up to a total of three, remembering that this set of chains counts as a treble. So we'll just do those two.
just like so. And then we can move on to doing the corner exactly the same as we usually would have done, just by starting our trebles off in there as well. But that is how we change colour, and you can see that we can very easily now just go all the way around the outside in exactly the same way that we would have done before. But I will do that, I will finish off this row, and then I will come back and join you once I've done that, and we'll finish off this little square. And just to point out that once you've done a few rows of your new colour and everything is feeling nice and secure, then you can cut the tail of the old colour, especially if it's getting in your way just before to cut it about three or four inches long so that you've got space to tie it in at the end. Right, so here we are. My square is complete apart from tails to tie in. All I need to do is attach it up at the top so that everything comes together. And to do that just the same as before, we will find our topmost stitch, just to find which one looks like it's going to be the corner where it should be connecting, which I think is probably this one just here. I am going to insert my hook underneath that stitch. I will grab my yarn and pull through it and then go through the hoop that is on the shaft as well just to connect those two sides together. And Then from here I'm going to act like I'm going to do a chain stitch like so but I'm going to pull through my tail a little bit because I'm going to cut it just here on this side and I'm remembering of course to leave a good sort of three to four inches on the end of this tail just so that it's got space to be tied in. But if I cut that one off now then I can pull it all the way through, tighten that off, and now everything is nice and securely attached, nothing is going to come falling to pieces. And there you have it, one finished granny square with its ends all tied away. And you can see that they are such simple, pleasing little things, and they're very easy to repeat over and over and over and over again if you want to put together to make a blanket. But this is by far and above the simplest of granny squares. Believe me, they get a whole lot more complicated than this. But I hope you've enjoyed this simple little tutorial just on how to make the basic little granny squares. Happy crafting, everybody, and I will see you again soon.